I'm going to show you how you can add audio to your stop motion animation in Photoshop. Here's a preview of what we'll be doing in this example. Yo, huh? <laughs> As you can see, adding a little bit of sound can really bring life to any animation that you're working on. Let's take a look at how we can do this with our stop motion animation that we created earlier. We'll start off from our stop motion animation that we created earlier. If you have not yet watched that video, then I've provided a link down below and I encourage you to watch it so that you know how to get up to this point. The audio files that I'm going to be using in this project have been downloaded from the internet I've gotten them from a variety of royalty-free websites. In addition, I have recorded some of my own audio sound effects and exported it out as MP3s, and that's what I'll be using in this project. In order to use audio in your project, you will not be able to use the frame-by-frame -frame animation. There is no option to add audio when you're working with the frame-by-frame -frame timeline. You can easily convert your frame-by-frame -frame timeline by going to the wing menu and choosing Convert to Video Timeline. This will take the frame-by-frame -frame animation and convert it to a video timeline. If I go ahead and expand my timeline, you'll be able to see that we have a number of layers. Basically, every single frame has been converted into a separate layer in the timeline. If we play the animation, it still is going to play in the same way, and it's going to take into account the timing settings that we had used previously. You'll notice when you're working with the video timeline, you have an audio track down at the bottom of your timeline. This is the place in which you can add audio. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll click the plus sign on the right hand side of the timeline to add audio to the track. Once I've done this, Photoshop is going to prompt me to open up an audio file. I'll be bringing in this musical file that I've downloaded from the internet. So I'll go ahead and click open. Audio tracks are going to show up in green inside of your Photoshop timeline. You also might notice that if we zoom out, the audio file is much longer than the rest of my files. I'm going to be trimming the audio file. I'll zoom out so that I can see all of the files. Because the audio track is about three and a half minutes long and my animation is only about 18 seconds, I'm simply going to trim off the end. If you position your mouse near the end of the audio track, you'll be able to trim that track so that it matches the same duration as the rest of the tracks. Now that I've trimmed it, I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in so that my timeline is filling up more of the available space. Now currently, if we play the animation, you'll see that the audio file is going to play, but it's going to abruptly cut off. I'll just play from about halfway through my animation. That doesn't sound very good, so what we'll do is we'll fade the audio out. I'm going to go to the little triangle on the right hand side of the audio track. This will open up the audio settings dialog box. Here is where we can control the overall volume and we can choose to fade in or out the audio. I'm going to choose to fade out the audio. I will have this happen in about two and a half seconds. Because our animation is set up to play at 12 frames per second, I need to fade out the audio for a duration of at least two seconds so that you can hear the fade. In addition, I'm going to reduce the overall volume of the musical track since I just want it to kind of be more like ambient noise in the background. We'll reduce this down to 30%. If we play the animation now, you'll find that the audio is much softer and when we get to the end, you'll see that the audio is going to fade out. That sounds much better. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in two sound effects. I have a recording that I made that says, huh? And I also have someone saying boo and an evil laugh. In order to bring in more audio, I'm going to have to create another audio track. 
If we come down to our audio track and click on the icon that has the musical instrument note, we can add a new audio track. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Now I have two audio tracks. Now I'll scrub through my timeline and I'm going to find the location where the fish has the question mark. This is where I want the huh to come in. I'll come to the right of the new audio track. I'll click the plus button and I'm going to bring in the huh audio file. I will need to move this so that it lines up with my timeline. If we listen now, you'll hear huh at this point in time. Yeah, huh? cash flow. I'm going to go ahead and click the triangle to the right of this track and we'll just increase this about 120% so it's a little bit louder. Let's play one more time. Yeah, huh? cash flow. Perfect. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in an additional sound when the jellyfish says boo. So I'm going to place my playback head there as a reminder. And since these audio tracks are not going to overlap, there is no need for me to make an additional audio track. You can, however, make as many audio tracks as you need to. I'll come to the plus sign and I'm going to find the next audio track, which is this boo and laugh file that I downloaded from the web. I'll click open. It's going to bring the file in and I'll scoot it over so that it aligns up with my timeline. And now let's hear what this part of the animation sounds like. Yeah, huh? cash flow. <laughs> you can hear that this audio track doesn't kick in right away. So I'm just going to scoot this over a tiny bit so that the boo text coincides with the boo on screen. Let's see if we like this better. Yeah, huh? cash flow. <laughs> that looks perfect. Now I have my audio added to the animation. It is fading out at the end, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm ready to export the file. I'll go to File, Export. I'm going to render to video. You can go ahead and set the settings. I'm going to use the same settings that I used last time and I'll just call this file stop motion 2 and I'm going to leave everything else at is and click render. At this point Photoshop is going to render out my file and now I have a video file that contains audio as well. Photoshop makes it very easy for you to convert your static illustrations into an animation and in addition you can add audio. There are some limitations to how much you can augment audio but for starters this is a great way that we can enhance projects and add both audio and images to create a dynamic video project.